On this week's Rotal Saltwater Fishing, we're taking a March 6 down to Key West in the fabulous Florida Keys. We'll be fishing for groupers and snappers on the rock piles off the Marquesas, hitting the wrecks in the quicksands, and chasing mahi offshore. I'll be with kayak fishing specialist, Marie Andressi. Make sure you're with us. Was world of saltwater fishing, celebrating 20 years of fishing television excellence. Big fish don't stand a chance. Once again, we're down off the of Key West in the Florida Keys, the Mark 6. We're docked at Key West Stock Island Marina and staying at the Perry Hotel. And what's going to make the trip special is that I have a kayak fishing specialist, Bree Andresy. Now, Bree is a doctorate of nursing and she has a fiery passion for fishing out of kayaks. And she has a tremendous catch record from inshore fish all the way to offshore fishing. And what probably inspired me the most is her penchant for offshore fishing. And uh, just recently she caught her first sailfish from a kayak. I've always respected these kayak anglers who will take kayaks offshore and catch impressive bottom fish or pelagic. That takes a lot of skill. I've been in school for most of my life. Um, I was in nursing school and then um, I practiced as a nurse and I went into a doctor of nursing practice program. Getting outside and, and fishing was my escape and it really helped me um, to get out there. It was very therapeutic for me. It kept me sane <laughs> and any chance I get, I'll go out and I love fishing. So here's my opportunity to take her out and show her a good sampling of some of the opportunities off of Key West aboard a triple powered center console fishing machine which might go just a little bit faster than her kayak. And I want to take Bree to the rock piles around the Marquesas which are roughly 25-28 miles west of Key West. I heard about the Marquesas, I never again were, was able to fish it. We had everything set up, we were making our run and it was an absolutely perfect day. It is a place where you have to pick through a lot of small and undersized fish to have a shot at catching a legal sized grouper or a legal sized snapper. Some days the fishing can be spectacular and even on marginal days you're always finding action. As soon as you drop a bait down at the bottom in 35 to 55 feet of water, you're getting tap, 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 a lot of small fish. And then you never know when that rod's going to really bend over with a quality fish. That didn't take long at all. What size jig? That Williamson uh, flutter style jig. Feels grouperish. He took, he took some drag from you. Do you ever think that you see the metal out doing the live baits and the natural right. baits? <laughs> Either it's a grouper, I foul hooked some snapper or something down below. It's looking uh, grouperish. Check Ooh. this out, huh? That's a nice one. So I felt like we were, we were tag teaming it. And, you know, my line would go down and then George's line would go down. I'd bring up a lane snapper. He has a yellow tail. And then he started to get the grouper, and then I got really excited. I was like, okay, hey, there's grouper in this area. So you just bouncing that off the bottom? I was, yeah, I throw it out there, bounce it off the bottom, and I just like let it sit there, but I just like radically, but fluttered some more. Then I'll read up two, three feet, drop it down, and just mud it, and they were hitting it just on the mud. Yellowtail or lane, what do you think? <laughs> I think it's a little bit bigger. Oh! Grouper, there you go. Is it a That's grouper? That's yourself a red grouper. Yay! That's what I was going for. Something a little bit bigger. Yeah, like I was telling you about the Marquesas, you get a lot of undersized fish, but usually the action is, is fast. But that's the mainstay grouper. And it was such a slick, calm, windless day that we only anchored on one rock pile. Once we took the anchor up, it was such a slow drift that we got over the other ones, we decided just shut down and drift over them. And once we would get right on the, or the crown of the rock pile itself, and we'd start dropping down our baits, and we had a good bite of Ray Grouper. <laughs> <laughs> he called me up. <laughs> Nothing like a good dousing of salt water when it's about 98 degrees out. George Poveromo's World of Saltwater Fishing is proudly brought to you by Penn. Let the battle begin. 
Mako. You'll find them where the fish are. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela. Your adventure starts here. Mercury Marine. Go boldly. George will be right back. After sampling the bottom fishing off the Gulf side of the Marquesas, kayak fishing specialist Brian Drassi and I head farther west in search of permit on the quicksand wrecks. The action has taken place west of Key West in the Florida Keys. After the Marquesas, George took us over to some wrecks and uh, we were going permit fishing. I knew we weren't too far from some of those wrecks in the shallow quicksand area. We brought down about two dozen live blue claw crabs and I had a couple outfits rigged for permit. And I've never used crabs before, so I was asking him, I'm like, all right, where do I hook this so that, you know, it's moving, it's natural. You know, I slowed down well before the wreck, tried to make a very quiet approach, told Bree to get up there and have a look for any kind of permit. And, uh, you know, we, we find some permit. There's so many, this is wild. I recently caught my first permit. I know that they fight really hard, so I was really excited. Bree came back, fired. I think sight casting is my new favorite thing <laughs> because I threw it on top of it and I saw it come up and just eat it. There you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm gonna back you through that wreck so they don't catch you. Hang on, Bree. Okay. okay. I'll move some of these rods out yeah, of the way. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. I would say a permit fights like a Jack Revelle. <laughs> I think it's the shape of it, the way that, you know, it's coming through the water. It feels like you kind of foul hook something too, so it's really heavy. Nice job. Woo! Seems like you've done this fishing thing <laughs> once or twice. <laughs> Woo! It's, it's all fine. The fish is just trying to get you back near the wreck, but I think we're far enough away to yeah. not pose a problem. The big difference is when you're hooked up with a fish and a kayak, the fish pulls you around, but at least on a bigger boat, the boat gets to follow the fish and makes it a little bit easier on you. On the kayak? Yes. The fish pulls me around and it, it seems to get tired faster than this one is right now, but. <laughs> I think I see it. I saw some uh, awake over. See it? You see oh, the permit? I see it, I see, That's I see it. it. That's your fish. <gasps> you get a certain comfort level when you have a permit around a wreck. Once you know that you're far enough away from the wreck, they don't have the energy to make it that far back. So that's a good comfort zone because at that point you could slack off a little bit and relax and enjoy the fight of the permit. Wow. And only in the Florida Keys, right? That's amazing. You can start getting all this variety. <gasps> or I'm gonna grab it by its tail over here. Okay. Keep pumping, just do what you're doing. Woo! Silver platter fish. Oh. Congratulations! <laughs> yes! Take your fish. Oh my gosh. That is huge. Oh, that's so great. Uh, Florida wow. Keys, Key West Permit. They fight so hard. You did a phenomenal job in ah. circle hook. Circle hook. Where it's supposed to be. This fish wasn't going anywhere. You know what to set a hook, don't you? <laughs> she did an outstanding job. I was feeling really proud of myself at that point to be able to show her the wreck fishing and score her a beautiful permit. She just bought that like uh, the pro that she is. Congratulations, Bree, once you get the permit down in the water. Thank you. It's your fish, you can release it. All right. One, two, three. Check that out. That fish can't get away from us fast enough, huh? Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> George Pofferomo's World of Saltwater Fishing is brought to you by Simred. Go with Simred and go with confidence. Rapala Coastal, another great day. Suffix, always use the best line. ACR, the leader in marine safety electronics. George will be right back. No fishing trip to Key West would be complete unless you visited the city itself and all the vast attractions. Uh, we took Bree to the Papa's Florida Distillery and to experience something that is not only a premier rum, but something that's just tied into the fishing community itself. Papa Hemingway himself loved Key West, hence the name of Papa's Pilar the Rum. Papa's, Hemingway's nickname. Pilar was the name of Hemingway's boat. And if you look at the shape of the bottles, they're shaped as canteens, which Hemingway was in the service. So all this ties together. 
Then there's the Mel Fisher Maritime Museum, which really ties in the whole trip in the area. Uh, the Mel Fisher Maritime Museum is uh, one of the leading shipwreck research centers in the country. Uh, we go out and we dive on the seafloor and we find amazing things and we get them all cleaned up and, and uh, interpreted and then we present those to people. So when people come to our museum, they're going to see a history like they've never seen anywhere else. All these amazing things from, from shipwrecks. Amazing, remarkable history from the seafloor. Well, with one permit uh, released, let's go back and look for more. We made another run around the wreck. Then I finally knew what to look for because they, they kept saying, you know, they're, they're out there, you can see them. And Bree pretty much repeated the scenario, here comes the fish. Oh my gosh! <laughs> permit eats, we back out of that wreck. <laughs> well, back you away. He's far enough away from the wreck, so let him do what he like to do. Okay. Oh, girl, this is wild. I saw the school permit, and you made a throw. I mean, they were like right on that wreck. Yeah. And I saw it eat, and then you came tight, and I was at that decision, do you go the other side or here, and I saw it curving back to our side, so I put it in reverse and tried to give you a hand pulling it off, and <gasps> you did wonders. There it is right here, see it? Yeah, I see it, I see it. <laughs> this side of the boat, make it easier for me to reach over. And... Oh, it broke! It really well, did break you're that kidding time. Me. See this beautiful fish, you're bringing it up to the boat, bringing it up to the boat. All of a sudden, line goes slack, hook shoots up past me, and <laughs> my heart just dropped. I was a little bit devastated um, as I watched it swim away. Oh! oh. I could see it. It just pulled. <sighs> so day one, we finished a gorgeous day made a run back into Key West, pulling a Stock Island Marina, docked the Mark 6, and now it's time to clean the boat. Day two, uh, we were up early, got on the boat. Day two was gonna be offshore. I was really excited because it was our offshore day. Another gorgeous day, pretty much flat calm, had the Simrad radar on bird mode. And what the bird mode does, it shows you or identifies any birds on the screen. And we're going for mahi. A little secret, I have only caught one mahi in my life. So I was really excited to go out there and, and George was showing me um, uh, just how to use the radar and where we were going to. He was saying, you know, we're, we're gonna go on a hunt today. We're, we're looking for birds, we're looking for anything floating, we're looking for the weed patches and um, how to read the radar and see, you know, that might be a bird or that might be a boat. And, and that was completely new to me. That 300 to 400 foot zone was loaded with weeds. And I did hear some reports about people catching dolphin from it, but I just felt that that might have been a little too shallow. I'm gonna run out to the wall, Woods Wall, which is the big drop. So I was really excited to get out there and just see what we could find. George's Tackle Locker brought to you by King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. Mercury's Vessel View Mobile 1.9 app enables you to stay on top of crucial boat information and a lot more through your cell phone and iPad. For example, engine hours and vial data, including battery voltage and pressure and temperature of both oil and coolant, and exactly when routine maintenance is due, is easily monitored. Know with precision accuracy fuel capacity, fuel used, average mileage, and distance to empty, all critical information when making a long run or fishing multiple days. And should a mechanical issue arise, both you and your Mercury dealer will be alerted to the fault and if it's advisable to continue fishing or return to the dock. Save the pictures, GPS numbers, and descriptions of a quality catch, promising fishing spots, and even navigational hazards which may not appear on a chart. You can also record your boat's performance under various loads and conditions from hole shots to top end speeds. Split screen capabilities on my iPad enable me to review vessel view information alongside other apps. For example, I run Simrad Electronics, Therefore, I could pull up their sea map reveal chart, study the bottom of where we fish, and determine if we should return there or seek other structures. I'll know well in advance that my outboards are perfectly fine for such a trip, and that I'll have ample fuel to do the entire range. 
Mercury Performance Stats Key West. Seas Calm. Power, triple Mercury Verado 400 horsepower outboards. Total miles traveled, 135. Speed, 45 to 48 miles per hour. Total fuel burned, 140 gallons. George Poferomo's World of Saltwater Fishing is brought to you by Starbright, professional grade boat care products. The Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. Papa's Pilar Artesian Crafted Rum, never a spectator. King Sailfish, the pioneer of catch and release mounts. Visit kingsailfish.com. I'm in the Florida Keys with kayak fishing specialist Brian Drassi. We're now in search of dolphin in the deep Gulf Stream waters off Key West's Atlantic side. The first thing we find is a floating gas barrel, and George says there has to be there has to be something around that. And I explained to Bree, he said that could be good because you see the growth on it. It's the growth that attracts the smaller bait fish. So I was so sure that we were going to get uh, dolphin around there. We had the trolling baits out. We came right by it. But nothing. I said, wow, that was unusual. Make a big turn. We come back around, come through the barrel again, nothing. We get about a quarter of a mile away from the barrel, and here they come. <laughs> <laughs> Now I'm going to hold this one in here. He can be the Pied Piper and keep the rest of the school around. All right. I still hear you making noise over there, so I guess you're OK. Oh, there's more. Oh, I know. I see them all behind us. Trade places with you. Dueling dolphin. <laughs> Almost look like young of the year fish. All right, any And there's a release on mine. Holler if you need help. All right. I've always heard people say, you know, throw out, throw out another bait, throw out another bait. I'm like, why would I do that? Because I feel like I'm going to get tangled up. I can see why you do that, because <laughs> you're going to get doubled up, and you're going to catch two fish, and that's what we were able to do, and it was, uh, that was just so much fun. <laughs> Look at him. What's such a pro? Beautiful. Such a pro. <laughs> Come on, Mitt, you can do this all day long. That's so fun. Okay, so that means I'm going to release mine now. Look at the colors. Woo! Oh my gosh. All right. Okay, I'll go over here. I'll go over cool. here. But that was a lot of fun because it would just toss it out there, watch it eat. It takes off, and I'm just loving it. <laughs> Think this guy's legal? Uh, we got the measuring tape. If you want to flip them in, go for it. And I'll let this one go. And it was a pretty cool way to, to end the dolphin day and uh, racked the rods and looked for other things and kept moving all the way back. So we caught uh, a decent amount of mahi and we were gonna run back and if we found anything along the way, we were just gonna throw some pitch baits. All of a sudden, George turns to me and asks me if I wanted to get behind the wheel. I, of course, how could I ever turn that down? <laughs> I was able to drive this amazing boat. Which is big for me because I don't let anybody drive this boat. But I did have an ulterior motive. I wasn't being just a nice guy letting her drive it. We had 10 dolphin that had to be filleted and a filthy boat. And I needed somebody to help me wash that boat. You know, I helped dirty it up, so I decided to help clean it too. So when I got back to the dock, offer her a Papa's Plor and Coke, give her a couple of brushes, some Starbright, and let her have at it. It's an immaculate boat to start off with, so I wanted to make sure that we left it better than when I first got on. Three years ago, I found a gem here on Stock Island, the Perry Hotel Key West. Number one, you have the Stock Island Marina, which is right at the base of the Perry. You could stay, go downstairs, walk right out to your boat. You go back downstairs to Mad Stock Island Kitchen and Bar, a sensational restaurant, everything is here. The restaurant, the marina, there's a pool, there's hammocks, and just everything just flowed so beautifully that it's just a really easy place to come and stay. Food was amazing. So we had dolphin. And we had it grilled and blackened and uh, beer battered, and it was, it was great. You got a side with it, so we had it kind of family style. It was just a, a super dinner, and I highly recommend it uh, if you're taking your boat down to Key West, 
Without a doubt, try the Perry. I guarantee you'll be back here again. It was the best two days of fishing that I've had this summer, and fishing Key West was just amazing. I, you know, I got to see the dolphins schooled up. I got a really nice permit. Lost a few, had my heartaches, but that's fishing. She is an outstanding angler who does it all, and uh, just keep an eye out for her name because you're gonna hear a lot more of her. A true pleasure and a great angler. If you'd like to keep up with our fishing adventures, please follow me on Instagram. I'm at George Poveromo. On Facebook, I'm at facebook.com forward slash george.poveromo. And you can view our episodes at any time on our YouTube channel, George Poveromo TV. We'll see you out on the water.